So our uh, next speaker, uh, Richard Bay, uh, many of you know already. Uh, tricuspid valve, difficult to image. Uh, how do you do it, Richard? Thank you. Uh, well, Paul's given me uh, another tough talk to go through, but uh, I think it's important. It's my disclosure. So there are a number of tricuspid valve uh, devices coming down the pike for tricuspid regurgitation. And just as we did with the mitral valve, it's really important for us to understand the anatomy and the imaging views to effectively navigate these procedures. Unfortunately for us, the tricuspid valve is a much more difficult valve to deal with. In addition to having to deal with three commissures instead of one, uh, it can be very technically challenging because they're thin leaflets. When you get 3D, often there's leaflet dropout. You can get significant shadowing from the atrial septum onto the tricuspid valve, especially if it's lipomatous. And we're not really used to paying too much attention to identifying specific views to view specific leaflet pairs. And that's really important for these procedures. So in summary, it's much more difficult to guide a tricuspid intervention than a mitral intervention. But it can be done. Unfortunately, <laughs> there is some pain uh, in the learning process. <laughs> Wait, which one's who? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're holding the clip. You're holding the clip, Paul. <laughs> All right. So in the interest of time, I'm not really going to go through tricuspid uh, grading of uh, severity. Uh, there are ASC guidelines and European guidelines that outline that well. So I'm going to focus on the anatomy and the views. So we'll start with transthoracic. And sometimes with these procedures, you actually have to use transthoracic imaging because your TE imaging is not going to be adequate. So the RV inflow view, if you don't see any atrial septum, I mean any ventricular septum or LV, then this is the one view where you see the anterior and posterior leaflets, and you're kind of cutting the heart in this plane. If you see a little bit of uh, ventricular septum or a little bit of LV, then whenever you see ventricular septum, you're dealing with the septal leaflet, and then in this view, you'll have more of the anterior and septal leaflets in view. The other view that we standardly get is a short axis view at the base. So we're cutting the heart in this plane here. And if you come near the aorta, we should see an anterior leaflet. Uh, but further down, it's some combination of anterior and or posterior leaflet. Sometimes it's hard to tell where the transition is. The apical four chamber view, um, if you see the LV opened up, uh, and we know this is the septum, a ventricular septum, so we know this is the septal leaflet. Uh, but if we see the LV opened up, we typically generally are seeing the septal and anterior leaflets. If we tilt back a little bit and we see a little bit of coronary sinus coming in, not a whole lot of LV or mitral valve, then generally we're seeing the septal and posterior leaflets. And just as an aside, you know, always image the hepatic veins to document the reversals there. So now we'll go to transesophageal imaging. And uh, these two images are obtained from the same patient, so we have some uh, correlation here. So similar to the uh, transthoracic uh, four-chamber view, if you see the LV opened up, you see the mitral valve. Here we should see the anterior and septal leaflets. And we have some anatomic correlation because in the commissure between the septal and posterior leaflets, we see a uh, pacemaker lead, and we don't see that in the upper image. If we advance the probe a little bit or move it a little deeper, again, like the uh, transthoracic, you start seeing a little bit of coronary sinus, you don't see a whole lot of mitral valve or LV, then we're seeing the septal and posterior leaflets. And here we have the correlation because we see the pacemaker lead, uh, which we see in the 3D images. So uh, again, like in the uh, transthoracic views, the short axis at the base, uh, near the aortic valve, we don't see any ventricular septum, so this should be anterior leaflet. And if we use an X-plane and we cut through that, then we should see anterior leaflet uh, and septal leaflet. And this can be used as a grasping view. In this image, there's not much of a septal leaflet here, um, and, but we can see in the correlating um, transgastric view that in this region, there's really no septal leaflet. And so it's similar to the transthoracic view. The uh, short axis view is this plane. We put a X plane near the aorta, and we should see septal and anterior leaflets. Uh, 
And uh, just like with mitra clip, you can get a dedicated grasping view. Uh, sometimes it's at zero degrees, but you can do the 140 to 180 uh, view, which is kind of the reverse four chamber view. And you'll see either septal and anterior or septal and posterior leaflets. Going back to zero degrees, if we advance the probe a little bit more, we'll get this deep esophageal view. So the left atrium disappears, you don't see the atrial septum. So if you have um, in your mid-esophageal view, if it's hard to see the tricuspid valve because there's a lot of shadowing from the atrial septum, advancing the probe a little bit into the deeper esophageal view should uh, help get rid of that. And sometimes this is a better view to set up your 3D imaging uh, to get rid of that shadowing artifact. Here you see the patient has a huge coronary sinus. And from this view, you'll see septal and anterior, septal and posterior leaflet depending on how deep you go in. So for these procedures, the transgastric is really critical. We know, we've gotten away from that with the mitral interventions, but because the tricuspid valve is difficult to image, um, this view is critical to see uh, leaflet identification, mobility, coaptation, and identify where uh, the tricuspid, valve, uh, tricuspid regurgitation is coming from. 3D can be very, quite variable. If you have somewhat thickened uh, tricuspid valve leaflets, you'll get good reflections and you'll get a nice 3D view if there's not a lot of shadowing from the atrial septum. More often than not, because the leaflets are thin, you get a lot of dropout, you get this moth-eaten appearance, but sometimes it's good enough to identify leaflets. Um, but sometimes, I mean, even with a good imagination, it's really hard to tell what you're seeing. And that's why the transgastric is very important. Uh, don't forget from TE, you can view the IVC. If you go a little deeper in, you can see the hepatic veins. You can document hepatic vein reversal. Uh, and this patient had a huge coronary sinus and torrential TR and actually had systolic reversals in the coronary sinus as well, kind of analogous to pulmonary vein reversal. So I think Paul's going to go over this case later, but this is more for the anatomy. This is a patient with severe tricuspid regurgitation. You can see a big coaptation gap, really no other options, uh, previous uh, surgeries. Um, and they put a pacemaker lead in, and they put too much slack into the coronary sinus pacemaker lead. Um, but basically, uh, just really severe TR, and uh, we felt that we could try to do an off-label clip procedure here. So Paul will discuss more of that. But basically, the anterior and septal leaflets are probably the easiest to visualize for grasping. And uh, so that's where we went first. We went a little bit further out in the commissure because uh, there's less of a coaptation gap. And then you're left with a lot of fiddling, and it can be quite painful trying to get an equivalent <laughs> to a mitra clip uh, grasping view. And here you can see. Uh, from the 3D, we've uh, clipped the septal to the anterior leaflet, and we moved the tricuspid regurgitation more centrally. And uh, by closing a little bit of that coaptation gap, uh, then we put a second clip uh, to the septal and anterior leaflet. We basically bicuspidized the tricuspid valve here. And actually got a nice result. I don't think with any of these devices were really going to eliminate tricuspid regurgitation, and I think, you know, the goal is to significantly try to reduce it. But we felt that this was a good uh, result, and the transthoracic day later showed uh, a nice reduction. Anterior to posterior clipping is much more challenging uh, to view, and fortunately, I think it will be uh, performed less often. The uh, tricuspid annulus tends to dilate over time more laterally in this direction. You get less bang for the buck if you uh, clip the anterior to the posterior leaflets. But it can be done, uh, and we have done it. So this is a patient with severe tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, we've already placed one clip uh, from septal to anterior, because that's the easiest place to get. And uh, we line up the clip kind of like mitral clip over the posterior and septal leaflets. And uh, instead of a zero degree or a 140 to 180 uh, view, which you use for septal to anterior or septal to posterior, when you're doing anterior to posterior uh, grasp, you have to go someplace in between. And it can be hard to find where you can see a delineation between the anterior and posterior leaflets. It takes a little bit of work, but uh, with a lot of pain, we found that and uh, actually were able to grasp that. <clears throat> 
And here you see, it kind of almost looks like a mitra clip with uh, two clips in there. And, you know, again, you're left with residual tricuspid regurgitation, but, but it is a significant reduction and, and hopefully will be enough. So again, uh, imaging the tricuspid valve with an eye towards interventions can be technically challenging. You have thin leaflets, use the transgastric view uh, if the, your 3D is not very good. You get, if you get significant shadowing from the septum, you need to use a little bit of a deeper esophageal window. Uh, you need to really think about which views are best for specific leaflet pairs. Uh, and it's much more difficult to guide uh, than the mitral interventions, but it can be done. You have to be patient and persevere. Make sure you're fully caffeinated and have an empty bladder <laughs> before the procedure starts. Thank you. We have any questions for Richard? Richard, that, that, that's fantastic. I mean, uh, we've uh, fiddled in this space as well. It's, um, it's also really challenging to figure out how much TR you have to start with and how much you have at the, at the end. And I've ended up moving towards more MRI to check you know, our results to see how, how well we've done. And uh, certainly these patients will have 50% regurgitant fractions or 55%, it's just, just horrendous. And even reduction down to the moderate grade seems to help them a ton. So that's, uh, my hat's off to you for that imaging. Is it, that's not easy. He's incredibly patient with the imaging as well as with me. And uh, so very thankful. And, uh, but I think you're right in terms of the TR reduction, you don't have to get them down that much. Mm -hmm. I think the bar is much lower for TR than mitral. Mm -hmm. And they'll just diuresis. So uh, question for you. When you said that transgastric view is critical, and we, we did our first tricuspid clip yesterday at the University of Colorado, and the patient had a high yield hernia and couldn't get a transgastric view. So and it was exceptionally yeah. hard because of all the things that you, yes. you talked about. Um, it went up with a good result. But I, I wonder what you use to sort of fall back on, uh, whether it's transthoracic echo mm -hmm. in concert with TE, or yeah. whether you have a specific sort of algorithm with TE of what to do when you don't have that transgastric view. Well, uh, unlike mitral flip, it, it's not common, but uh, much more frequent that I'll reach for the transthoracic probe. Uh, especially if you have like that anterior to posterior leaflet, if you need to do that, that RV inflow views, it's going to be a, a nice view to get that. And, um, you know, if you have bad TE images, often your transthoracic imaging might be a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we grasp under transthoracic imaging as well. Um, but you have to kind of brush off your transthoracic skills, you know, it's not easy often times. Another thing that people have done is they've sometimes pushed on the heart. Yeah, we've, we've so did actually, you try that, the chest compression? It's very helpful. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yeah.